You guys, I don't even know how to start this video because I just got to talk to you people today. And I need you to sit your butts down and listen to what I have to say because we're talking about love today and fear. Because the Bible says, I'm about to read the scripture, perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. Now, this is in 1 John 4.18, which we're going to read in a second. Now, the reason why I want to talk about that this in particular is just so many reasons. Also, because me and the Lord the last two years, it's been like dealing with your fears boot camp. Like every single time I like overcome a new fear and he's like, great, so let's do the next one. Let's do the next one. And I'm like, ah! so I've been living on this roller coaster. I mean, when I say, ah! I mean, I literally silent scream 20, 20, like 20 to 30 times a day. I'm just there like silent screaming because I'm like, God, I can't believe you asked me to do this. Like, you know, it's a lot. But I realize now, like being on the other side and you know what? The reason why I have to make this video is for, for that exact reason. Like just experiencing like the transformation in my own life and like realizing that like, it really is better when God, like when you just listen to the Lord, honestly, and he is right, even if it's something that makes you so uncomfortable, even if it's something you don't want to do, even if it's something that feels like way past your like your your level of vulnerability, you're willing to go, all of those things, right? He knows what he's doing, and it's because he loves us, right? And like I said, perfect love casts out all fear. And I realize that fear is so much like the root of so many things that we experience as humans, like anxiety, for example. Like in society today, like social anxiety has become such a big thing. And I think that. I've said this before, one of the biggest reasons we have so much anxiety um, as a society today is because society is so, like, there's this, like, fear of doing something wrong, losing what you have, you know, all these different things that people are fearing in society, not having a group to belong to, not being right, making mistakes, you know, all of these different things, and that's why I actually think this scripture here is so interesting. So we're going to let the Lord speak for himself. We're going to start with my favorite scripture because this is the scripture that kind of reaffirmed to me that love isn't something in this world that we just get to decide whatever it means to us because God himself is love, which we're going to read that from the Bible as well. But first of all, I'm going to start with my favorite Bible verse because this is my favorite Bible verse and it changed my life. And it's 1 John 3, 18. And it says, beloved children, our love can't be an abstract theory we only talk about but a way of life demonstrated through our loving deeds. You guys would have heard me quote it. Usually I quote it in the ESV version. That's the, the passionate translation I've just read. I usually quote in the ESV. I say, little children, let us love not just in word, but in deed and in truth, right? So what God is saying, right? And I always say this because I've always found it fascinating. You know, people quote John 3.16 all the time. And it's funny because John was the beloved. That's what he refers to himself as in the book of John, if you read the book of John of the Bible. When he says the beloved, he's talking about himself, which I think is actually really funny. And this is what I'm saying. I love the character of the Lord. Like God is just so out of, he's so out of our minds. Like he's, his, he is just himself and he's just, he just is anyway. So, you know, um, God, the Bible says in John 3, 16, right? For God so loved the world that he gave, he did something. He didn't just feel something. He didn't just think something. He didn't just demand for something. He gave. Like the first thing that his, his first response in his love, in his showing of love is that he gave. And that is the bit that, that, that sticks out to me in that verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life that he loved us so much that he would do whatever it took, even though we would decide for ourselves to choose death knowingly. He loves us more than we love ourselves because he loves us so much that not only is he willing to correct it, he's willing to give his only begotten son. It's deep, right? And so as soon as you start to think like that, it started to just cause this whirlwind in my brain of like, well, that doesn't exist here. Like love don't live here anymore, like on this planet, if we can be so for real. And I think a lot of the reason that it isn't comes down to fear. Fear 
and just all the various fears of life. So I'm going to continue to read a little bit more in this and then we're going to read the first John 4 18 and let the Lord speak for himself. So we continue in first John 3 um, we're now in 19. It says, we know that the truth lives within us because we demonstrate love in action, which will reassure our hearts in his presence. We know that the truth lives within us. Isn't that so interesting that the Bible has a linkage between love, truth and fear? And isn't that interesting? It's just like how are you going to catch it? The Bible says, um, the truth shall, shall set you free. Now, what might the truth be setting us free from? Fear. Why? Because perfect love casts out all fear. We know that the truth lives within us because we demonstrate love in action, which will reassure our hearts in his presence. And I understand what he's saying there, because to me, I get it. It's like when you know that the truth lives in us because we demonstrate love in action to reassure our hearts. You know you're demonstrating your love with your action. It reassures you. It gives you a sense of like, there is no room for, for I know that I love because I know that it comes from a truthful place. I don't know if that makes sense. It goes on to say in verse 20, whenever our hearts make us feel guilty and remind us of our failures, we know that God is much greater and more merciful than our conscience. And he knows everything there is to know about us. I love this again, because, you know, the funny thing for me, and this is why this is all a big kerfuffle, is I, I realise that I have the complete opposite experience of major, majority of people as far as fears, right? I've noticed that a lot of people fear God because they fear judgment, they fear, you know, failing, they fear the fact that they haven't done well, whatever, and they've put all their hopes in the people that they have. So I believe a lot of people find it hard to have God because they've already put like they have people who who don't remind them of their fears or who don't make them feel guilty or who show them mercy or who show them grace. And so because of how God has been, you know, kind of presented to the world, they don't necessarily feel that that is going to be on offer with God. Right. As in like God is not going to be God is going to make me feel guilty. He's going to remind me of my failures, you know, all of that type of thing. Whereas I have had the reverse of that. I feel like that's all I've experienced from people or at least a lot of it, and what, I, or what I've experienced from God, which is why I love him the way that I do, and why I believe he actually loves me. Because I realize that every time I describe why I feel like God loves me, it's never to do with the physical things that he does, like, you know, blessing me and whatever it could be. It's always, he doesn't make me feel bad. You know what I mean? He doesn't make me feel bad for when I do things wrong, and he makes me feel like I can touch, just try again. He loves me at my worst right? Not just when I'm at my best, which again, all of these things have not been my experiences with humans. So whereas other people have fears for God in terms of the guilt, the failures, the whatevers, I have had fears with people as in like, I don't want to like, because that's what me and the Lord have been going through the last year, you guys, it's insane. And so I'm making this video because I've got to give glory to God because realistically, he's actually seen me through so many of my fears. For those of you guys who have been here over the last two years, you'll know that like at the start of last year, January last year, I told you guys, if I had ever, if God had ever in, in, in anything, if you told me, oh, by the way, May this year, you're going to be on stage singing in front of thousands of people. First of all, singing who? Let alone singing where and singing in front of how many, right? That was like, there's no way. And it was so funny because God is such a gentleman like that, where he's always like, listen, I'm only willing to go where you're going to allow me to go. So if you want me to allow you to, if you want me to like to help you to overcome, you got to tell me that you're ready for me to take you there. You know what I'm saying? And what I never told anybody except from him only in January of last year was, you know what, God, I will do whatever you ask me to do. And nothing's off the table. All along singing was not on the table. There was a few things that were not on the table that like, God, I won't do this and I won't do this and I won't do this right? And by, for, for, for all, for, to give you guys an idea of how long I held on to that, the last time I was like really willing to, to like sing or sang anything seriously would have been like when I was a kid, like when I was like maybe 12, 
okay so ever since then i've been asked to do this that and the other can you sing for this i've said no 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 here and there i've done little like things that are not that serious like with my friends and stuff you know growing up and i've always actually been somebody who writes music i you know play the keys basically taught myself quite um i've taught myself like really early on in life and i still have all the songs i used to write actually which is so funny so i've always been that kind of person but like i never wanted to like do it again and there was a whole bunch of reasons why i didn't and so I just had to kind of trust the Lord, you know? And so as soon as I said that, the Lord is like, all right, <laughs> a couple of months later, my friend's like, hey girl, you want to come to Italy and like sing on door? I was like, I just said yes, because I'm impulsive. And again, this is how the Lord knows us so well, because I am impulsive. So I tend to do things and make impulsive decisions. This is another thing I've been giving give myself a hard time for. By the way, guys, this is a very much, an, anyway, this is another thing I'm giving myself a super hard time for, because I'm like, dude, you're so impulsive. Like I make the winning team. This channel be called the winning, the winning team was an impulsive decision. The people who were there know that my channel has had other names before, just like one name, another name. And in the middle of a video, I got sick and tired of whatever I was saying, like that was happening. And like about 15 minutes of the video, I was like, this channel is being called the winning team. I uploaded that video immediately. I made the logo. I changed everything and boom, that was it right impulsive but then you know why the lord does that allows i realize the lord has placed that quality inside me it's not because being impulsive is bad it's because i overthink so if i do something impulsively like there's no going back now like when my friend said oh you want to come to italy and i said yes and then i signed contracts and this that, and the other there's no going back now i have to get on stage somehow i have to figure this out and it's the same thing with the winning team i was like it convicts me sometimes i'm like you called yourself you called your channel the winning team like you're gonna just like sit here and be acting like a loser you're just going to be sitting here and be, you know, like slave to your fears. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I realized is why God is just, oh, he's just amazing in what he does. And like I said, perfect love casts out all fears. So like for me, you know, seeing all God to take me through all these fears, this time, it was last, it was last month I was in Italy again, singing on tour again. And it was so funny because the singing part was not difficult for me whatsoever. That was like, I was jovial. You guys saw, I wasn't panicking like the first time. I was focused, I had other fish to fry. <laughs> it went the first time. I was all crying. I was hyperventilating before the first time I had to sing in front of anybody. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, how am I going to do this? Like I'm freaking out, right? Lo and behold, I get on stage, I get lo and behold, the singing part turned out to be the easy part. There was other greater fears that I had, right? Of which the greatest of all time, which I realized is just people in general, you know what I mean? And so I've just been like going through all these different levels of all these different fears and just like facing them. And I realized that, you know, that is where love truly is. Like, cause you shouldn't have fear. We shouldn't be living in fear in this life. And the only reason we are is because the enemy is attempting to enslave us from having the things that the Lord intends for us to have, from following and trusting in the Lord the way that we are supposed to, because it's uncomfortable a lot of times, you know, I like the, I had to come to the realization this year and I still hate it. I'll be very real with you all that, you know, I like the, the, the logical things because it's a, it's a place of safety for me. Like it really is like where people find safety in like people, <laughs> I find people to be unsafe. It's like all of my alarm bells are going off. All the warnings, like warning, danger, danger, be aware. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Whereas like when it comes to anything logical, I feel very comfortable. That's why when I'm having severe, like when I feel anxiety and things, I do algebra and things like that. I'm like, I'm going to do some algebra. I'm going to do some this. I'm going to study about like the other day I was like having, I was really like going through it because the Lord was trying to teach me whatever, whatever. And then immediately I was like, okay, I'm going to study more about gravity because I've been wanting to do that for a while, you know? And as soon as I did, I could feel all my feelings come, but it's because, you know, I was shutting them off. Why? Because of fear, because of what? Reminding, being reminded, being made to feel guilty for not being perfect, being, being reminded of my failures, you know, things that I've dealt with a lot, you know, and just knowing that you don't really have any, well, me feeling previously, like I don't really have outside of God, you know, an uncomfortable environment where I can feel like I don't have to be perfect and I can also just be myself. Right. And, um, then obviously the Lord with the winning team, the strategy, he was like to me when I been in the beginning, which when I first started the channel, I was severely depressed actually at that point. Right. 
when they started the channel, I was like, oh, just say whatever you want, just say whatever you want. And I had no idea where it was going and I had no intention of actually what it went. I had no goals, basically, for the channel. I just wanted to say what I wanted to say. I wanted to have somewhere where I could say the things that were in my head because my head gets overwhelmed with the amount of information. And I like to express it because I want to be able to go back to my, th my own thinking and I want to be able to go back. I mean, that's why I like journaling now, which again, the Lord told me I didn't want to do it. But the Lord literally told me, he's like, you need to journal, you need to write, you need to just, just, I'm like, God, what, do I, what am I supposed to write about? I'm like, I write everything. And now I have a whole suitcase worth of, like, notebooks, like, of things that I just write. I just can fit, look, where is this one? So my most recent one that I just finished, this one, just write. I have a new one. Oh, I need to design it. I'm going to put a design on here. Writing, just writing everything. Talking, it's just, it's just, it's crazy. But then these things have brought me things, because who knew that me talking on, on the internet, because I got, like, everybody has YouTube these days, like, I don't need fame, I don't want to be famous or anything, I don't, like, want a platform, per se, or anything, like, but the Lord's like, but what about your people? And lo and behold, I come on here, I make videos, and slowly but surely, I start to meet some of the most incredible people in the world. I'm like, this is so much fun, you know what I mean? And this is what I'm saying, like, the world we live in is so counter, um, counter love. The, lo the, world, the world we live in is so counter love. You know what I'm saying? Because we have lived in a society where, like I said, the anxiety, the fears, the what about if this happens? What about if that happens? You know, nowadays everything is cancelable. You can't say anything anymore. And I, and I am going to sound like one of those people that says that you really can't say anything anymore. You really can't do anything anymore. You really can't be like proud of where you come from anymore you can't be proud to be a woman anymore you can't be proud to be a man anymore you can't be proud to 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 to, to like the color green anymore you can't be proud to you, you can't be anything everything is offensive to everybody right and you know what it is such a thing of the kingdom of darkness because it's like we're all offended by everything and the reason why we're offended right is because people often find i've noticed that the reason why people get offended is because people recognize in you or in somebody else, something that triggers something in them that's like a, well, you can't have that. So it's like, if you notice that, like, oh, let me let me, let me pick and choose my examples here because I don't want to pick something that's going to be too difficult, for, too deep of a wound that people won't hear out what I'm going to say. Um, okay, here's the simple ones, right? Here's some simple ones. So, like, I realized, for example, like, I was thinking, you see this whole big back, big back thing, right? I'm not in favor, I don't personally, and it's not a judgment to anybody else. Everybody can live their life as they want to. Everybody can have the body they want to. For me as a person, I'm a very active person. I like to be able to move very comfortably around my body and through my body because I express myself through my body, right? It's part of my personality and it's just part of who I am. So for me, I can't, the big back thing doesn't work for me. You know what I'm saying? But I've found that like when, if I now decide for myself that I want to look after myself, like I want to, I want to lose some weight. I want to get in better shape. Just saying that alone amongst other people is offensive. Right. And it shouldn't be because I'm living for myself. Right. So I now can't say that. And I now can't want more for myself. And why is that? Because the people are offended. Why are they offended? Because it's poking a wound in you that maybe you're not happy with how you look. And that's a you thing. That's not a me thing. I have re recognized something that I'm not comfortable with within myself and I'm going to address it. So since this big back thing started like blowing up virally, I've actually lost weight, praise Jesus. And I'm feeling a lot better within myself. And I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. But imagine I didn't do that out of what? Imagine I didn't say that out of what? Anxiety or fear. Because, you know what I'm saying? Because of what? Because I don't want to offend other people. And why do I not want to, why am I worried about offending other people? Because the people that I'm offending, the reason why they're offended is because they're offended that I would actually, that, that, that they have something they're insecure about as well. And they are now projecting onto me their insecurity. Do you see what I'm saying about how it's, how society like factors itself in like that? And I believe everybody looks beautiful at lots of different body types. That's the other thing. Like, I just think that I know what I want my body to be and I know what I don't want it to be. Like, for example, I don't want it to be as small as it's ever been. Like, there was a time in my life where I was just an absolute gym rat, like, properly, and I got all the way down to, like, having near abs, which as a woman is unheard of. But what I had to do in order to get that, I ain't doing again. Also, I like my body to be more of a, you know, I like to, I like to not look like... I, I know how I want it to look, basically, and I don't need to explain the whole scenario. The point is, is that, like... I, we live in a society, like I said, where you 
being proud or taking ownership or winning or being a victor is offensive to other people. Do you see what I'm saying? Even if you're not intending to offend them, even if you're just, and it's because of what's inside of them, right? It's because of what's inside of them. And that's the problem with the society that we live in is we're just always like adjusting for the them and the them that's there. And then we have live in fear because of this them, right? And the them, we shouldn't even be caring about the them. We shouldn't even be living in fear of the them. Like we should be actually, it's like the them and the they's. You know what I mean? Isn't that funny? They, them, <laughs> the they, you know, like how I was like, they in power, they people, but isn't it just funny that that's anyway, you guys, some of you, you know, you will know because you guys are here and you're here and now and the here and now, right? As I like to say, so, you know, so, um, that's one thing that I just said, I've, I've noticed is like, you know, for myself, there's a lot of things I haven't done because of the fear of what, how other people, how it makes other people feel, how it makes other people, why do I care about what other people feel? Right? Because if I say that I fear God, God says perfect love casts out all fear. So why am I, did you see what I'm saying? Let's read the scripture while we're here. This whole passage is just beautiful. My goodness. I'll read, where should I read from? Yeah, look, and this is actually, I'm going to read from here because here you're going to see, I'll highlight when we get to the scripture about, we will hear when we get to perfect love, but here um, you're seeing how, for me, the difference between God versus the world, right? <sighs> That should have just been that. Should, anyway, here's here we go. So First John four seven, which I find is funny. This one chapter away from my favorite my favorite verse, the exact chapter away. One first four, First John four eighteen is perfect love casts out all fear. Insane. Um, those who are loved by God, let His love continually pour from you to another, because God is love, right? Everyone who loves is fathered by God and experiences an intimate knowledge of him, intimate knowledge of him. Isn't that interesting? And why is that, why is that, why is that a part of love? Because God is the only one who truly loves, unlike the rest of the world. God is the one, God is the biggest cheerleader you can ever have in your life. You know what I mean? God is the biggest cheerleader. I remember like in the last couple of weeks, um, you know, going through a lot of things, a lot of tough things, because the Lord's been pushing me past my, far past my comfort zone. I've actually been pushed further than I've ever been pushed before in the last couple of weeks by God in particular. And I remember Jesus was just like, keep going, like keep, and I could literally feel the voice, hear the voice of Jesus like, just keep going, like just keep going, like keep pushing, like, you know, it's this cheerleading element. He's your greatest cheerleader. He wants to see you win. He loves you more than you love yourself. He's like, I don't, you're, 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 you're compromising. You want that and you're prepared to settle for that. But I want you, I want more for you. That's what the Bible says. God will do exceedingly and abundantly above everything you can ask or think. So in order to understand the love, love, real love, you do have to have an intimate knowledge of God. You have to understand who he is. You have to understand that like for God, so love the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know what I'm saying? Like this parable of the prodigal son and his son has gone off. He's spent all his money, whatever. How would the world react to the prodigal son? The world would be like, oh, your pay, you should, you're going to have to figure this out. Like, blah, 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 blah. You shouldn't have wasted all that money. Now you're an adult. Now figure it out by yourself. What does the prodigal father do? He, going against all Jewish um, customs and, and rules and traditions, runs after his son. That would have been considered, like, I can't remember the equivalent for, like, like not, not unclean, but, like, un... Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to describe the word, right? He ran after him. He says, make the whole, like, make a feast. Get everybody together. Going, like, do you know what I mean? My son has come home. This is the most important thing that matters to me, right? The Bible says that Jesus, God, he left the 99 sheep that were where they needed to be for the one lost sheep, right? In, the, in Matthew 9, the Bible says that Jesus looked upon the people and he saw that they were hopeless and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And he was filled with compassion, and he said, Lord, where the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Like, this is what I'm saying. When you get to know God, like, it's, and you realize that the love that he has and that he is love itself, 
He really is. There's no ifs or buts about it because this doesn't exist in the world. It makes no sense for Jesus to, to get on the cross, right? And to die for those of us who fail him and betray him and slander his name and don't even believe in him and nitpick at every single little thing that he does and try to find him guilty for everything. Everything I just mentioned in the previous chapter, right? Trying to find guilt, find fault in everything he does and hold him against everything that ever happened. And if people do this, like people do this with me. People do this with me now. It's still happening. And I re- that's how I realized I am, I've, I've really overcome and I've really had a, a breakthrough myself because I'm like, I don't care anymore. I'm like, listen, do you know that how, do you know the love that I've experienced from the Lord? Do you know that you can't come for me because perfect love casts out all fear? And anyways, we're coming to that. So the Bible says in verse eight, so we're first John four, eight, and this is the passion translation. The one who doesn't love has yet to know God for God is love has yet to know God. Doesn't that tell us a lot about the world? The light of God's love shined within us when he sent his matchless son, matchless <laughs> son into the world so that we might live through him. This is love. He loved us long before we loved him. It wasn't this weird transactional relationships that we have today. Self-serving. I'll only do if this, this, that when people start to really divvy up like whatever i'm like listen just 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 love like if you just love somebody with the best that you can do and somebody's just loving you with the best that they have right then it's all going to figure itself out like i really do believe that that's the only gray area that i believe in when it comes to things is like and obviously bearing in mind do that with wisdom you know got to have reasonable boundaries i'm not saying throw yourself completely into people i'm saying love honestly and love to the point where you're like, this is what's, this is the best I can do for this person. This is what's best for me to do for this person. Because again, sometimes there's things like people enabling isn't the best for somebody. Sometimes cutting somebody off is the best for them because it means that they have to figure out whatever it needs they need to figure out. Sometimes you, you know, anyway, we'll get into all of that because that's not what this video is about. Um, this is the love. Um, so into the world so that you, we might live through him. So, so the light of God's love shined in us when he sent his matchless love son into the world so we might live through him. So we now live through the love of Jesus because Jesus loved us. We can now live in that love. This is love, verse 10. He loved us long before we loved him. It was his love, not ours. He proved it by sending his son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sins. And if you think about it, let's think about what the real sin was that Eve actually made in that garden. This, the sin that Eve actually made was to not love sacrificially, if you think about it, because she was in a position where she has, she's come into the picture, right? <laughs> this sounds like modern day. This literally sounds like modern day, modern society. She comes into the picture and there's God. God of the universe, most high. There's man. Gorgeous, delectable, okay? Tending to the garden, all these animals. Hello, Adam. See what I'm saying? Everything is done. Like, everything is done and organized. She just gets to come along and participate. Like, like do you know what I'm saying? And when I say participate, I don't want, pe- I don't want people to see that in the wrong way. What I mean is, obviously... And this is the thing. I think men and women together are the perfect combinations of the two, like the two, uh, how can I call them? Like the left and the right brain. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Perfect explanation. The left and the right brain. So it was not, the Bible said it was not good for man to be alone. It was not good for man to be alone. Because he can't, like, being just one side of the brain isn't enough in life. We need both. We need both sides of the brain for the brain to function as a brain. Otherwise, you don't have half a brain. There's no use of half a brain. If you cut off half your brain right now, you're not going to function. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to modern society. But anyway, so she's coming, just to clarify before the other people are like, oh my gosh, right? But I'm saying that her, her, what she had to add, a lot of work had been done already is basically what I'm trying to say. Right? She comes into the picture. And what does the Bible say? Let's look. I'll just use, I'll use my actual, this Bible side. Where's my, oh, sorry guys, I keep, I have to always have everything on hand because, because the moment's like this. I want to read what it is that she saw out of getting through the train. I want to read it verbatim from the Bible. So it says, oh, too far, so far. It says, okay, 
Genesis 3 verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was desired to make one wise. These are all internal things. So basically what she saw is she knows that the, that if the eat from the tree, you shall surely die because she tells that to the snake herself. So she knows that she knows the consequences. She knows what's happened before she got here because she just got here and all of this was here. So she knows she didn't do none of this, right? This is, we're all Eve. This is what I'm trying to say. We're all Eve in the world today. What does she decide to do? She decides to choose herself. She could have just said, you know what? I could have this desire to have one wise and I could eat this fruit because it looks like it tastes good and I could whatever. Or I could sacrifice that the things that are selfish desires for all of the, uh, cause there are so many other incredible things that I already have. Right. And this is exactly the world we live in. We would rather have these material self-serving selfish things. Right. And we'll sacrifice the really valuable things, you know, Adam, her relationship with Adam, her relationship with the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Having God, literally the creator of everything and herself. And that's the, that's the world. And that's why I feel like it's so key that Jesus did what he did the way he did. It says he proved it by sending his son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sins. Jesus said, listen, there is nothing I'm going to allow to get between me and you guys. And nothing. I'm nothing is going to stop my love for you. I don't care if you betray me. I don't care if you do whatever. I'm not choosing myself. I'm denying myself for you guys. He's like, Father, if it is your will, if it can be done, please take this cup away from me. It's not like he was just happily doing it. He was enjoying it. I can't imagine what it's like to be Jesus. Like, actually. Like, I, I just think, that's why I'm like, I just think Jesus is the greatest man. Like, he's the greatest man of all time. Because he's the greatest human of all time. Because like, I can't imagine what it's like to be Jesus Christ himself and actually sacrifice himself. Like, for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? And so I just, oh, I'm just like, God, it's just amazing. And then he puts himself on that cross and then he spat at and he's whipped. How many of us today don't even want to walk out in shame and tell people things or could keep things, you know, to ourselves and hidden away and in private places because we don't want to feel the shame. We don't want to be ashamed in any type of way. And Jesus is willing to hold every bit of shame. He's willing to watch his enemies laughing at him as a man. You know what I'm saying? He's willing to be whipped and spat on. He's willing to sit there, you know, just pinned to the cross, right? Bleeding out. People are laughing. I'm thinking, ha ha ha. I thought you were the son of God. If you're the son of God, save yourself. Misunderstanding him, not understanding everything. He did not do anything other than I have come to save my, like my church, the bride of Christ. I've come to save them and I will do the job that the Lord has set for me because I love you because love is a doing word. Love is a doing word, right? And this I'm saying, this is not what's in the world, right? So let's keep going. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um, delightfully loved ones. If he loved us with such tremendous love, then loving one another should be our way of life. No one has ever gazed upon the fullness of God's splendor. But if we love one another, God makes his permanent home in us and we make our permanent home in him. And his love is brought to its full expression in us. And he has given us his spirit within us so that we can have the assurance that he lives in us and that we live in him. It is so true. Like recently I've been having experiences where like, I've been like, look, for sure the Holy Spirit lives in me because I've done things that I know that I don't want to do. And I've done them anyway. And I'm like, this is the Holy Spirit. Praise Jesus. Well, meanwhile, Beyonce is on stage allowing Sasha Fierce to take over so that she can cast spells over the over, over people and work for the kingdom of Satan. Some of us here are allowing the Holy Spirit to move so that we can, you know, like defeat the stupid snake finally. Verse 14, moreover, we have seen in our own eyes and can testify to the truth that the Father God has sent his son to be the savior of the world. Like it took someone to love that sacrificially. To truly love, to save the world. And it's so love. True love prevails over all. Oh my gosh. I'm just in this, guys. This, the Lord has just really done work. Because there's no way I would have made this video a year ago. Not a chance in hell. Um, <laughs> um, 15. Those who give thanks uh, that Jesus is the son of God live in God. And God lives in them. We have come. Isn't it funny how the, like, the intimacy of the Lord, like, <laughs> because he's always like, <laughs> he's about to say it now. Anyway, I will not even say anything. Um, those who give thanks to the uh, and he lives in them 
Verse 16, we have come into an intimate experience with God's love and we trust in the love he has for us. God is love. Those who are living in love are living in God and God lives living through them, right? Intimacy. By living in God, love has been brought through, brought to its full expression in us so that we may fearlessly face the day of judgment. Hallelujah. Because of all that Jesus now is, so are we in this world. And this is what I'm saying, like, and I really, really believe this. You see, I says we may fiercely face the day of judgment. That's one of those things that why I know that I'm rooted in the Lord, because I'm ready. And I'm not ready in the sense of like, you know, I want to get there and I'm, I can't wait. Like people misunderstood what I say whenever I say this, and I get it because they don't know the Lord, right? But I'm not looking forward to seeing other people being judged. I can't wait to meet God. I can't wait to finally meet this person in, in, in his fullness who I have, who has done so much for me and has loved me more than anybody ever has ever loved me and ever could. You know what I mean? Like I would never expect that level of love from God. Like, come on guys, he's God. That's, that's why you love of God is the root in our lives of everything. Cause when you have that, everything else is a bonus. You don't put all of your trust in people. You don't, get so easily disappointed you don't get so easily offended because your 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 intrinsic sense of self-value self-worth and love and your the fullness of the love you need is in the lord right and god is everything that's what the bible says you should love the lord your god with all your heart mind body soul strength with everything everything and that's why i feel like i was in an advantage in this life massively because basically all the areas where i didn't have somebody else i just ended up having god in every different area and so I feel this. That's why I can fearlessly stand before the Lord, not because I don't haven't sinned. Oh boy, do I sin, right? <laughs> I'm still just as fallen as the next person. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's what the Bible says. But it's that I have experienced his love so much and I have such deep intimacy with the Lord that I, I don't, it's not a day that I'm like looking forward to where I'm going to meet him for another time. It's just going to be a continued extension of the relationship I already have with him and the assurance I already have of the relationship that is already in existence there's no like switch of anything. There's no like die and then there's another scene. It's like, it's a continuation. It's just another day. You know what I'm saying? It's just another day. But here's the verse. First John 4, 18. It's taken me like what? Nearly 40 minutes to get here. It says, love never brings fear. For fear is always related to punishment. Can you hear that? Fear is always related to punishment, Right? Like when people say, if you don't do this, you're going to hell. That's not God. But love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our, heart, our hearts. Whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached love's perfection. What, can I tell you that when I read that Bible verse last year, I realized that love had not been perfected in me. <laughs> I was like, love is not yet, and it never will be completely perfected. Okay, guys, we're not perfect. We're not Jesus. You know what I'm saying? He's the one where love was perfected in. That's why he was fearless. That's why Jesus was sleeping in the storm. That's why Jesus was, because Jesus was never living in any type of worry or fear because he's perfected in love. He's like, listen, you Pharisees and Sadducees, I don't care about you. You guys are white noise. Do whatever you want to do because I'm not going to die a day before or a day after or a second before or a second after. The Lord has decided the day that I go. So you can do all you want. You can attempt to kill me all you want. You can attempt to do everything all you want to do because you cannot do, you cannot outdo God. And because my, my, I'm not fearful of you. That's why the devil dangles death as our fear. That's why, that's why death had to come into the garden in the first place, in the beginning, because the devil had to give us something that we fear so much that he can, he can enslave us to it, right? He can enslave us to it to the point where, you know, we have to just manage um, everything else as long as we hold on to, oh, I just don't want to die. Like the fear of death that people have. I don't fear death. And you know what's so funny? It was exactly this time last year, exactly August last year when I wrote my song, my first song, which is actually titled Scared to Live. <laughs> <laughs> like it's all just funny how my life just works in perfect timing like it's choreography it's just insane right and so you know that's what the lord is he's like afraid of punishment and love and he says our love for others is our grateful response to the love god first demonstrated to us like it comes from God into us and then from us out of God. Like I said to you guys about sh like shining in the light of your glory. I, d I don't know. Actually, you guys wouldn't have seen that video because the audio was horrible. But basically, you know, I had a revelation 
one day again from the lord obviously i was out and about i was standing and the sun was directly in front of me which happens to me all the time um and i felt the sun shining on me and obviously the sun shines back off of me like that's why you guys can see me right that's how that's actually science it's the science of it right the science is you can see me because the light rays are bouncing are reflecting off right shining the light of grace see, science and the bible it just works perfectly together in sync in perfect choreography right um yeah so the light shines off and it shines back because when you have that in you when it's into you it then becomes out to others so you can only give what's already inside of you and so that's why i know that love don't live here because people don't believe in, believe in god people don't have the revelation of god they don't understand who he is so i'm like you can't have love that's because I was saying this to the Lord when I was talking about like, well, why do you keep asking me to like give the human beings a chance again? I'm like, love, I don't live here. And these people don't know you. You can't tell me I'm wrong about that. And he's like, yeah, I know, but you know, and so and this is why I love the Lord because he's like, I know that he, he's, um, he, he, he does love us and he does, his love is for real, you know, and that when he loves us, the only way we can love is by his love being within us for us to then give to others you know what i'm saying and i find a lot of people who don't even necessarily like have a great relationship with god or believe in god or like necessarily feel ca- happy about everything that the lord has done in their lives always tend to live in godly principles in the way that they do their things and the way that they love others they live in a very they they follow like the godly principle quin- the principles of it all and let me see if i want to read verse 20 Oh, yeah, let's read this. because Oh, yeah, because there's only one, two more verses. Let's read this. I love this. I love the Lord. Oh, I love God. First uh, John 4, 20. Anyone can say, I love God, yet have hatred toward another believer. Jesus, right? This makes him a phony, because if you don't love a brother or sister whom you can see, how can you love God whom you can't see? For he has given us a command, whoever loves God, also demonstrate love to others and this is why loving god is not enough guys i have to be really real and like if i could say anything to the christian folks of the world and to any believers of god loving god is not enough because if you love god you will love like god right if you love god you will love like god because love and God and God's love never leads to self-servingness. It never, it never is internal. It's an external expression for God so loved that he gave, he gave his only forgotten, begotten son. He gave, Jesus died on the cross. He died, he died, he died. The thing that everybody's scared of in this life, right? As humans, imagine how Jesus must have felt on that cross dying. Imagine how Jesus must have felt because at this point, no human in history has done enough for death, not to be the end for us all. And by death, hell, because what is death? Total chaos, total disorder. I've said it before. Law of entropy. Listen, if this is your first time, so we're going to go through the sciences again. Okay, because I love me some science and I might be having a new opportunity that's, again, come about in the last couple of weeks. Because every single time that I overcome a fear, all of a sudden new stuff starts to happen. And I'm like, <laughs> this is so cool. So I might be having an excuse to be doing a lot more science very soon, which I'm really excited about. And increasing my level of scientific understanding. I love opportunities to increase my competency in maths and science. I love it. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, so yeah, he defeated death. Imagine that Jesus is on this cross. Imagine how much fear he has of dying. And yet what was greater than his fear of dying? His love. (laughs) Because why? Perfect love casts out all fear yeah so that's what happens when the lord brings you through your fears and i've been brought for a lot of them in the last couple of days and the last couple of weeks 
and the last over year and the last two years. And boy, has it not been comfortable. It has not been nice. I've had to be vulnerable more than I want to. I've had to admit things I didn't want to say. I've had to do things that have, that have disappointed myself and have disappointed others. I've had to have my heart broken by certain situations. I've had to swerve off, you know, the enemy and the lies of the enemy. I've had to persevere. Right? I've had to keep pushing and keep going. I've had to know that this world isn't going to, you know, um, I, that I have to focus my eyes on the Lord. I've had to trust in God, basically is what I'm saying. I've had to hold in my faith. And that's why faith is the only thing that God asks us for. Do you know, this is why. This is why faith is the only thing God asks us for. Because he's like, if you can trust me, everything else will figure itself out. That's what the Bible says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And you know what's funny? Kingdom and kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know what it's like? Kingdom, kingdom of God. It's like the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, right standing with God, the Logos word of God, the Bible. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, everything you're asking for, everything you're worried about, everything else. If you put me first, everything else is on its way. Just trust me. And that's why in Romans 10, 9, it says, if you believe, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart, you believe, you have faith that he was raised from the dead, that Jesus had the power to undo everything we have done in this world, that Jesus had the power to defeat death and disorder. If you believe that, you will be saved. Isn't that insane? And it's going right back to the garden again. Because it's like, so you mean to tell me, God, you're going to do everything. You're going to do everything. And I just have to love sacrificially. As in, if I, you are in me, I will love sacrificially. And why will I love sacrificially? Because I will have the faith in you, that Jesus is Lord. And your love will cause for me to behave the way that you do. And the way that you behave is you would die on a cross for the people that you love. You would, you know, turn the other cheek and forgive 70 times, seven times for the person that you love, you'll forgive again and again and again. You'll be understanding. You won't hold people's wrongdoings against them. You know what I'm saying? It's This is what I'm saying. Like, this is what love is. That's what it is. And that's why it doesn't exist in this world. And when I say it doesn't exist, I mean like in the world itself, it sense the constructs of the world, the, the, you're not going to, there's no equation. There's no amount of science that is going to create love. There's no amount of science, there's no amount of trying, there's no amount of studying, there's no amount of, 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 of just, you know, you becoming a slave yourself. There's nothing that you can, you're going to do, there's nothing we can do as humans in order to love by ourselves. It doesn't happen, it's not there. That's what the Bible says, God is love. He is, is he is love. And isn't that funny? Because what is he? God is, I am, Yahweh. I am the I am, I am, I am living. Living is God. Living is God, life, and thus Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, the only way to the Father is through him. He is life. He is truth. Going back to my previous scripture, First John 3, 18, little children, let us love not just in word, but in deed, in what we do, and through truth. And that's why God talks about the intimacy. He lives in me, I live, I, I'm in him, and he's in me. Do you see how funny that is? And all of a sudden, we all understand where the issues are with us all being promiscuous all over the world. And on that note, I'll leave you guys with that thought to stew on for a little bit based on everything I just said. You guys get understand what I'm saying. So I wanted to make this video basically to give God, the glory to God for my life and to just be the person to say it's real. Like it's very real. It's not fun. It's not fun all the time. It's not easy. It's tough. But boy, is it worth it. Boy, is the Lord going to see you through. And boy, is God the only one who you're ever going to get the love and the help and whatever you need. Because we're not going to do it ourselves because we're going to do what makes us comfortable. We're going to do what we're going to compromise. 
God doesn't compromise us because God loves us more than we will ever love ourselves. No matter how much self-worth you think you have and self-value and self-whatever, God loves you more than you love yourself. I can assure you of that. And so, you know, that's why I have to open my heart up to the Lord when he's asking me to do the things that I don't want to do because I'm like, God, I don't want to do because I really don't, I really don't, I really don't. He's like, please just, 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 just trust me. Just trust me. Trust me. Have faith in me. Do you believe I defeated death? Yes. So trust me. Oh, but God, but this, 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 and I, I experienced this and I went through that. And, but do you trust me? Do you have faith in me? Yes. So then trust me. Oh, but God, I did this, 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 that, and that, and that. He's like, yeah, but do you have faith in me? Do you believe? Then just trust me. You know what I mean? And that is the voice of the Lord. That's how God sounds to me. God sounds like the most beautiful male voice of just comfortability that you want to like fall asleep listening to. That's what the, the voice of the Lord is like to me. That's why even the Bible says that the, the spirit doesn't come, the Holy Spirit doesn't come as a big loud boom, but as a whisper. You know what I mean? A gentle voice, but pushing you. He doesn't come to condemn, but to convict, right? So the Lord won't say to me, oh no, you shouldn't have done that. You are going to hell. He'll be like, was that really for the best? <laughs> then I'm like, no. it's like the same way that, you know, like when a, if, if, if like a parent says to you that I'm not mad at you, I'm disappointed or even somebody else. It's not, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. It's the same element as that. God, he just is disappointed. He's sad. He's looking at us and he's like, I love you guys. Like, can we really not just, like, can you not just trust me and hear me out? You know what I mean? I really feel like that's how God feels. Like, can you really not just hear me out? Like, can you not just give me a chance? Like, stop telling me what somebody else said about me. And stop telling me what, the, like, hear me out. Let me in. Trust me. You know, so yeah that's what i have to say to you guys this is the results of me spending so much time with the lord and I, I i bear my heart out on my videos you guys for a reason because i understand that we live in a world that like you know being keeping everything in and not being vulnerable and whatever it's seen as wiser it's seen as like whatever but it's what's keeping us all bound that's why we're bound we're bound because we keep things in we're bound and i want to be the one to just say guys let's just let's just let it go let's just let's just let's just let's just love again You know what I mean? Let's just let the past be the past. Who cares what happened? Who cares? I don't care. Like, have you met every other person on the planet? Like, have you ever, have you, have you experienced everything else there is to, have you died yet? You're still alive. It doesn't matter how old you are. You're still here. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I do this stuff, guys, because it's tough. And like, and you guys are part of the journey. You see the things that I go through. You see, I tell you guys exactly what's going on, you know? And that's why, that's why the channel is the winning team as much as it was an impulsive decision. But as I'm saying, because I have to then live up to it. It's the winning team because we don't, we're not, we're not going to, you don't have to, 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 to lose to fear. You can win in love. And that's all I have to say. Because if life's a game, let's play to win. God bless you all. God loves you. I love you.